The other month, I was able to catch up with my friend Jordan over at Snakeville Grace. And so I asked her, what are some of the most rare and uncommon hognose morphs out there that you're interested in? And this is what she said. All right, I am here with Jordan from Snakeville Grace. Do Jordan with Snakeville Grace, <laughs> uh, aspiring biologist and hopefully a future herpetologist, current snake breeder and snake lover. And oh. mostly I specialize in hognose snakes, specifically the Western hognose, also called the Plains hognose. And the scientific name is Heterodon nasicus. Awesome. Oh, yeah. I've got just a cute little ghost. It's one of the less common exanthic combos. They've got this like really cool hazy look in between their pattern. And they also have this kind of like ruby red eye a little bit, but still with blue. And that's coming from the hypo. So different from the toxic, they've got like a slightly softer color. So they're not as common as other xanthic combos, but I really do like them. Another really cool xanthic combo that is one of my favorites, the storm cloud. Yes. It just also has sable. So the sable brings out a lot of pigmentation. So in sunbursts, it makes them super orange. In Mai Tais, it makes them this beautiful dark chocolate color. And with the storm clouds, it, for some reason, it turns out exanthic has a little bit of blue pigment. So it kind of just pulls out that blue color and it makes it more of like a Russian blue kind of snake, which is really fascinating. And they've got these like really dark, deep, cool looking colors. Another morph that is uncommon but it's probably going to make amazing things once it's a little more popular in the U.S. is called the Swiss chocolate. Now, the Swiss chocolate originated in Switzerland from a guy named uh, Julian Toth, and the Swiss chocolate is similar to sable. It does cause hyperpigmentation. It creates a lot of really beautiful, dark, saturated colors, and some combos have already been made with the albino, the toffee belly. Um, he just did super arctic, arctic, super condas, and they have a similar effect to sable, but one key difference is that the Swiss chocolate has a super dark mm. forehead. So the head stamp is not as well defined. And what I really want to see is some basically super Swiss chocolates that are also sable. Because what happens when you put mm. two hyperpigmentation morphs together? Make a black snake. Really, really dark snake. <laughs> really dark snake. So yeah. I'm really excited to see awesome. those. Another really cool combo I kind of want to see that involves an uncommon morph is a skull face super condo. Hmm. So the skull face is a dominant morph uh, originally created by Philip Longitano out in Germany. And the skull face oh, oh, yeah. creates a reduction in head pattern. So their right. body is completely unaffected. It's just their head. And some of them, that's why it's called a skull face, because right. it looks like they have a little skull. Now, why I want to see a super conda skull face is what happens once we remove all of the body pattern and most of the head pattern is missing? Right. Can we just make bright orange snakes that right. are just all orange? Are we going to get to that point in the hobby where we can just have solid colored snakes? Right. Like, that's so cool. Just think of all the super condos that we have, but mm -hmm. without the head stamp. It's really minor, but I think it's just gonna be like such a cool combo. And the awesome thing is it shouldn't be too difficult to make just right. with Superconda being co-dominant, well, incomplete dominant, and then Skullface being dominant, it should theoretically be easy to put the two together. Right. It's just going to be harder to introduce the recessive genes, right. which is most hog. You don't have to wait the years for the females to be ready. Oh, for... yeah, especially when you take yeah. that into consideration. Yeah. So throwing in, let's say, like a Super Yeti, which is a Superconda snow to a Skullface would be nice because then you'll pop you'll probably be able to get some albino that are just all no head pattern in the future, yep. or and the exanthics and the snows. You're a good boy. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. I love him. <laughs> He's such a good boy. What are some other unknown or uncommon, rather? Yeah, so some other uncommon morphs that I really want to see out there in particular is the savanna and the pistachio. Mm. So the savanna is a recessive morph. It's interesting because it's like arctic and conda in one. Right. So it does cause a reduction in pattern, which okay. it like it causes them to have small speckles okay. instead of reduced spots that are like larger. Huh. But it also reduces the head stamp, different from the super conda. So it actually looks really cute because they often have these little eyebrow looking oh. scenarios, which is just adorable. The little speckles. Exactly. <laughs> but then it's also a little bit like Arctic because I've noticed that the savanna is, it, it does create some contrast. Okay. So around all of the speckles, you'll notice some good like white borders around oh, there. Interesting. And just thinking of what that could do when you start introducing more colors to that, right. I think it's, it's definitely worth exploring. Um, right. Unfortunately, there's very,
very few people here in the U.S. right now that do have savannas. Mm. I've only, I only know of one breeder who has announced that he even has savannas. Okay. Uh, hopefully, I'll get some in the future. It is on my to-do list. Right. <laughs> So I'm very excited to start working with those. So they don't have a, they don't have like a tan color or anything like cream, like for Savannah? Uh, some of them Not get like, like hypo-esque. Okay. So they'll get, they'll often be a little lighter than most right. of the normal cob noses, as kind of happens with like Arctic. They'll right. usually sometimes get that softer, lighter color. Okay. And um, the last really awesome morph that I do want to talk about too, because it's not only uncommon, but Simultaneously, not a lot of combos have been made with them. So the pistachio morph is considered an enhancer morph. Okay. It does act like a hypo in the sense that I've noticed the babies that are visual pistachios, even though it's cons by Philip, who um, also created this morph, he produces over 20,000 snakes a year. So mm -hmm. it makes sense that he'll he'll yeah, get those mutations. Yeah. yeah. So the pistachio, I would call it an enhancer morph. And I talked to him. He said that he's proven that it is recessive. Mm. However, um, I have talked to a few other breeders who actually think it is polygenic. So mm. with not enough people working with that particular morph, it's kind of hard to know if it is polygenic. Is it just a line bred normal? Is it actually recessive? Because I did notice every visual pistachio did have a very well-defined feature, which right. is mainly their stomach. Now the pistachio stomach is not all black. It's kind of got this weird, not a checkered pattern, but like a smudged gray mm. look to it, which just makes it an uneven, it's not a full black, which makes sense because if it's doing something that's similar to hypo right. and it's removing some of that color, right. then that makes sense. However, like the lemon ghost, it does share a polygenic trait, which is most polygenic traits often show up more as they age. So the pistachios do tend to get more of a green tint with each shed. And when mm. they get like two, three years old, that's when you'll really start noticing really? that deep pistachio color. I thought I saw that. Yeah, them here. I do have a head pistachio. They don't have the pistachio belly. So the thing is, if this is a recessive, nothing should be showing through. But if you look at his colors, he's not actually the color of a normal. He's like a so almost like a middle ground between toffee belly and mm -hmm. hypo. Yeah, definitely. So it does show through. So which that's, just, would... that's just a normal het? Yeah, exactly. This Jeez. is just a conda het pistachio. That's very different. And he does look different. So I've noticed almost all of the het pistachios do have similar colors to pistachios. Mm. So as they age, they just get a little more green. Right. But with them showing through, I guess even as a het, it would imply that it's not completely recessive. But I don't necessarily know if I would call it polygenic because all of the visual pistachios had the same belly. Right. So they do have traits that only show up when you have two copies but clearly something is still showing up when you only have one copy. Yeah. So I'm excited to see the combos you can make with pistachio because most enhancer genes like Arctic right. can make amazing combos. Right. Right. And most hypo combos also look pretty cool. Yeah. The ghost is a hypo combo. That's an exanthic hypo. Mm -hmm. So it would be interesting to see what an exanthic pistachio looks like. Given that very few people are actually importing them and working with them, it means that Philip has kind of been able to work overall with them for much longer right. because not as many are going out. So he's probably able to just keep holding back the best right. eaters, the nicest expression. How far are you on a uh, storm cloud? <laughs> well, I have a visual Personal storm cloud. <laughs> so, I know you do. I've got a visual storm cloud and she is 50% het snowburst. Okay. And that's actually another morph that I wanted to touch on because yeah. it is hands down an absolute stunning snake. Right. And we have a uh, Conda, he's an adult male, who is het for snowburst. So snowburst is sable, exanthic, and albino. Now, okay. when you put those three together, you get something that doesn't look like a sable, doesn't look like an albino, hmm. and doesn't look like an exanthic. But then simultaneously, it doesn't look like any of those combos. It kind of just looks like a snow, but so hypersaturated that it is basically glowing white. Wow. And it is so saturated that the soft markings it has, even not as a conda, are barely noticeable. Right. Like you just see the faintest pink outlines. 
and they have these just absolute gorgeous ruby bright red eyes. Yeah. So I'm really excited to make some of those. Uh, another really cool morph that, funny enough, looks pretty similar is the Super Arctic Sunburst. And that one also looks phenomenal, extremely white, absolutely mm. gorgeous. But I would really like to compare a Snowburst and right. a Super Arctic Sunburst. Mm. What's interesting is technically the only difference between both of them is that one has Exampic and the other one has Super Arctic. Okay. But the Arctic gene is considered it a form looks exampic. of exampic. Yeah, it kind of so looks So it's like... interesting to see that right. they had really similar effects. Right. But which one is better? Right. I don't know. We'll find out when you we'll make one. We'll find out. <laughs> one seems a lot whiter, and I don't know if it's going to change with age. They just made the first few, so we're getting to experience that and yeah. watch them grow. This is what I live for. This is literally what I live and breathe for. Awesome. It's, it's amazing. I love it. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Yeah, no, thank you. I really appreciate I'll, it. I'll include a link to Snakeful Grace <laughs> in the description below and on screen. Yeah, and we have some Instagram, YouTube, all. all those fun things. <laughs> That's Brendan. That's Brendan. Yeah, no, he's usually the one behind the camera. <laughs> and don't forget, uh, Snakeful Grace also has a YouTube channel, so go subscribe to her. <laughs> Aw, thanks, guys. <laughs>